X-Men the Animated Series Season 1 Episode 3 Thoughts this episode is called Enter Magneto and as usual there are going to be oh there we go yes so just making sure this works yes go so let's we are go yeah episodes called Enter Magneto spoilers for these first three episodes another episode that I absolutely love so, yeah, we, we open on the guards abusing Beast, saying the kinds of things that, you know, that it, it especially reminds me of, like, the kind of abuse black people will receive. You know, they, they claim that, oh, he must not be able to read. He's just looking at the pictures. And it's kind of funny because, like, we're, we're not laughing at him. We're laughing at them because, like, Animal Farm, anyone who knows anything... And, we, you know, the kids can guess it because, you know, he doesn't read children's books. He, he, he quotes Shakespeare. Obviously, it's not a children's book. Anyone who knows Animal Farm, like, it's it's not a picture book. It's not a children's book, you know. So, yeah, really, really love that's they, – they made a perfect choice there, you know. And, yeah, so, you know, there's, we can tell that some mutant is trying to break him out. And, you know, the, the, yeah, Beast thinks, Wolverine, of course, you know, no, no way he's not going to try. Let's see. And, yeah, you know, Magneto tries to pull off a jailbreak and really does give Beast an excellent chance to, to get out. I get the feeling that this episode helped inspire, this scene especially helped inspire some of the jailbreak stuff in the movies that involves Magneto. And, yeah, I, I really appreciate, you know, Beast insists, uh, you know, he's waiting for his day in court. Uh, you know, uh, escaping from prison is going to make things worse, not better. You know, they currently they think of him as a criminal. If he escapes from prison rather than, yeah, trusting the courts, yeah, that they're definitely going to think of him as a criminal then. And, yeah, great uh, debate between Beast and Magneto. Really appreciate that the, yeah, they both, you know, they explain their points of view well. And, yeah, Magneto fights a tank and multiple helicopters. And because they want to move the story forward, they just do the thing where they cut to, oh, now people are watching it on TV, you know, because... You, you know, we've had enough action to keep the, the impatient kids watching. Now let's get on to the story. It's not just nonstop action. And, yeah, we, you know, we get the flashback where Magnus, yeah, sure, let's go with that. This, you know, which I get calling him Magnus because, you know, there are a number of comic book characters whose regular name really helps inspire their superhero name so they're you know Magnus Magneto yeah and yeah you know we we get the, the the backstory where you know he lost his family to these rebels so he wants revenge and this is such a such an important point such, such you know something that's really great to make sure the kids understand about minorities you know yeah it's not that there's never ever any like violence or, or crime but it tends to be based on circumstance you know the violence tends to be in revenge for something and you know it, this is the kind of thing that can really help understand minorities and yeah it is it's not the Nazis at least in this part I forget if they retcon that later in the show but you know I could understand if they maybe thought that was a little too intense for for kids. You know, you don't you don't want seven year old Timmy going to dad and asking, what was the Holocaust? You know, that's maybe a tiny bit early for, for that. And let's see. I, I appreciate that Jubilee is now really part of the X-Men, you know. Xavier explains this whole thing 
to her and the audience. I forget, does she just keep being the audience insert? Like, she's the one that has, that stuff is explained to? I, I forget. Anyway, but yeah, um, you know, he, he explains this and he's clearly concerned about Magnus and she says, you know, we can stop him. You know, she, she's, it's no longer, I, I mean, I guess you guys can stop him. It's we can. Beast has a great monologue in court, and the, the I appreciate the joke with, you know, if you prick us, do we not bleed? Don't tempt these people, you know. Dude, there are dozen, maybe two dozen people in this room who would love to test that, you know. And, you know, I, I believe it was Lindsay Ellis in her video who pointed out, who brought Rotten Tomatoes to court? Like, what is this? <laughs> it's, yeah. Keeping in mind, she also loved the show. When when she made the video, at least, I, it's possible she changed her mind. But, you know, and he points out, you know, okay, so no bail, I have to stay in prison. I guess I'll have time to catch up on my Dostoevsky, which, yeah, if, you know, Dostoevsky, there's a lot to read there. I, I don't know if maybe they should have... Uh, let's see. There's there's that other one. Um, you know, uh, War and Peace. So, you know, maybe he should have said Tolstoy instead because the original published edition is 1,225 pages. You know, that's the... You know, an Alias made a reference to that. Your, your brief was long, like Tolstoy long. But... Dostoevsky definitely works as well. And, you know, Sabretooth is in the court. How did he get it? Like, there's no hole in the wall. Was he hiding? The, the you know, the giant guy who towers above everyone and with, like, the main... <laughs> I love how calm... It just... It doesn't really make sense, but who doesn't want to see more Sabretooth? And I appreciate, like, we actually don't know what happened. You know, they just, they, they sprinkle in a little bit, you know, Wil Wolverine wants him dead. Uh, you know, he, he, he wants to take him out of the infirmary and only stops when Xavier says, you will no longer have a home here if you do, you know. So it's, and he, he ain't happy about it. He's not like, oh, okay, sure. You know, he's, uh, you know, okay, I guess. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm almost certain later in the show we do learn what transpired between the two of them and it is really yeah you you understand why he hates it. and i'm just gonna make sure that that was not a lightning it was not okay i have my my phone set to warn me because there's been some lightning recently tis the season after all and Let's see. Yeah, and you know, Storm is concerned about Xavier, and and he's like, I'm I'm fine, Storm. Just don't check my browsing history. And let's see. Yeah, you know, Wolverine. You know, he gets the claws out and is like, Oh, is he actually gonna like stab Sabretooth right there in the hospital bed? But he cuts the the wires of the. You know, <laughs> gotta find. The kids do want to see him use the claws. You can't show him, like, stabbing people. So, yeah, he's... Like, you could have just removed the wires, you know, but whatever. And the... Yeah, you know, basically the message here is, you know, we help all mutants regardless of the exact circumstances, uh, you know. And, and yeah, that's, a, again, a great, you know... It's not that... The show isn't saying that there are no bad mutants, a.k.a. minority members, but they all deserve to be helped. To So, so yeah. And Magneto launches rockets, which I feel like he's done in the... Oh, actually, if I remember, that might actually be the from the first... From the first comic... From the first X-Men comic, and which was the one that... Introduced Magneto, and he's trying to... Yeah, so, very, very cool. To, and... Yeah, I, I really appreciate that the, the conflict between Magneto and the X-Men is not like this knockout, drag out brawl. You know, there, there's a lot of action in these episodes, but, you know, he's 
and it's also I love that he's actually he's so freaking powerful that they can barely like he's just making these you know um this force field and they just can't hurt you know we've seen like um you know for example cyclops fires right at him and it just like you know yeah doesn't hurt him at all but yeah you know it's a it's a debate you know the he talks about you know we shouldn't be protecting normal human beings and just yeah um let's see and he does yeah he does end up managing to launch them and you know wolverine does what he does scratches with his claws you know, and he's, like, stabbing machines, and I, I love that he starts with, like, a monitor, which is, like, if you know anything about computers, it's, like, that's not gonna do anything, you know, but anyway, yeah, it's a, it's a great visual thing, you know, I've seen it in, in, there's, like, a Die Hard clone that does a similar thing, where, you know, a, the, the John McClane stand-in is doing the, what's it called, the, um, I'm just gonna make sure. Oh right, yeah. Yeah, you know, the, um, has to has to stop a computer, shoots the monitor, leaves, and it's like that's not at all gonna stop it. Like that's that just means you can't look at what's happening. You know, if you don't destroy the tower, but you know, it, it's like a '90s film. People didn't know any better. A lot of people didn't. Um, but yeah, so we, you know. And it also, it really reminded me of, like, a video game. It's the kind of thing where if, if this was a X-Men or Wolverine video game, you'd just be attacking machines with, with your claws instead of just going up and, like, hacking or something. And, you know, Storm does manage to stop them. At first, she's actually going to self-sacrifice, which is, you know, I appreciate... It's good to teach kids that, like, giving a lot in order to you know, to stop evil, that's a good thing, but if it's not necessary, make sure, and, and you see one of your friends trying, stop them, you know, yeah, really appreciate that, and the, you know, I don't think they actually say the words, like, dead or die, because that's, you know, kids TV, you can't get away with that kind of thing, Saturday morning cartoon, at least, but, you know, Cyclops, like, is she, you know, doesn't have to finish, the, and, and, Wolverine's like, must be our company. She's exhausted, she's asleep. Which, let's be honest, Wolverine is probably pretty exhausting to be around. He must be fun to be, except for all the tragedy and such, but, yeah, he's probably pretty exhausted, like, oh my, what is Wolverine doing now? You know. And, yeah, you know, the episode ends with Magneto saying, you know, they're, they're traitors to their own kind, which, that is something that some minority... You know, I, I really appreciate that the the episode makes sure that we understand it's not, you know, like the, the, yeah, let's see, how do I best word this? I guess I'll start by saying, you know, the, the members of minorities who may, you know, get violent, it's, you know, it's not as, uh, it's not just like random. It is in response to something. And, you know, basically, like, Magneto is the, you know, that's if, if things really go downhill. If things really go downhill, then you end up with members of minority groups saying, there's no choice but violence. Uh, we can't coexist with these people. And, you know, I, I believe in the comics, it's like Magneto is supposed to be like Malcolm X, which I think I'm going to go with Lindsay Ellis and not touch that one. Um, and, and, you know, Xavier is supposed to be MLK. But, but yeah, you know, it's not, it's not without reason that Magneto wants to... And actually, the, the thing with, you know, oh, the, the rebels, you know, I get kind of the sense is like one of these South American countries that there were some, you know, because like the kids might have, and uh, yeah, maybe the kids already heard of this, and if not, you know, if they go to their parents, you know, their parents probably can say, oh yeah, you know, there's this, that, and the other 
South American country with rebels and, you know, this kind of thing. And, yeah, I think that's everything. They, they Yeah, they keep doing a great job giving every, everyone something to do with their powers. And, uh, let's see, I, I like that Wolverine, you know, actually almost gets violent in court, you know, because of the injustice of it. You know, so it's not just the the evil mutants that are getting violent over, you know. So it is a just, you know, it is a, it is a fair reaction. You shouldn't act on it, but it is fair to, to you know, because, like, they're going to, they're going to keep Beast in prison just, like, you know, un yeah, until the, the, court, you know, when, when it's like, you know, the, the, certainly they should know that he wasn't violent, you know, he, he participated, but, you know, he's, he's not violent, and there's not really any reason to think that he would try to, like, flee the, you know, but yeah, so the, what was the, um, let's see, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, the, the lawyer, you know, saying, ah, he's trying to justify his act. Yeah, he's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a trial. It's, it's not just, like, it's not a sentencing hearing. You know, the matter hasn't been resolved yet. It's only fair for him to explain where he's coming from, you know. And the, uh, let's see, I think that, was the but but yeah you know and that also that can help teach kids that sometimes the justice system doesn't work not every you know having a defense lawyer and getting your day in court does not mean you will be treated fairly uh, you know it doesn't mean that like it's still it, it is still a, an important you know obviously we need a fair court system but as it is it is not quite it's it's not fair for everyone kind of thing and yeah i th i think that's everything um right i guess i appreciate that like i forget if it happens later but you know xavier doesn't send jubilee out on a mission you know there wasn't really much of a chance or risk of that in the first two episodes it was, the mission was usually to go and help her but yeah it is like She's like a teenager. She just got her powers super recently. Don't send her after the the master of magnetism just yet, you know. I like the beast could get, you know, Magneto, I presume. You know, I I did I mean, in the comics in the 60s, it was like, oh, he can bend metal. Magneto, you know, it's like in the movies they're like, is he really going to be called Magneto? Okay, I guess tell you what. A drunken teenager will come up with that name, you know, and he just, you know, he, he agrees to it later, but, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe Beast has been told there's one mutant out there so fabulous no one can deny his sense of style, you know, so when he comes in with the big opera cape and the, the you know, bucket helmet and everything, he's like, wow. You know, that's, um, let's see, I think, right, um, it's a kid's show, so there's going to be some humor, so early in the episode, you know, when Magneto is stopping the guard, he, like, rips off his belt, so his pants fall on, you know, that's, yeah, kid's show humor, and, you know, it is like, you know, if you've read the comics, it's like, yeah, I'm sure, Magneto would be that nonviolent in fighting someone he hates. That's definitely mm -hmm, sure. Uh, kids, please don't get into your older brother's comic collection because the yeah. In the movies, he gets to go a bit more, you know, harsh. Uh, I think that is everything. Yeah. Uh, that's it for this one. See you again tomorrow. Make mine marble.